All right, so um, what we're going to do today is the first demo critiques, and this is more of like a trial to, to be able to help people here who are looking to advance their careers and looking for a real honest opinion on how their music can go forward. And a lot of the times what happens with musicians is they try really hard to make good music, but they don't have anyone who's done it before at a high level to kind of show them how the how the sonic qualities work, how uh, the songwriting should work. There's just not a certain level of teaching that's out there. So what happens is unfortunately, artists spend a long time just spinning their wheels and spinning their wheels and spinning their wheels. And then they sometimes go to music college, but a lot of music teachers, the reason why they teach is because they're not professionally making enough money to sustain a living. So even though they can teach them certain understandings of things, they really can't show them how to make a successful living and definitely not a six figure living for longevity because they're actually not doing it themselves. So what I like to do is help people understand how to make a living in this business. And a lot of it comes down to simple factors. One is going to be the songs, like how good are the, the songs, the actual quality, not just the fact that you have a good voice. There's a million great voices out there. Uh, not the fact that you just have cool lyrics. It's a little bit of everything, melody, production, the overall sonic quality is very important because it's a product, but also it goes into the person. Are they a unique individual, how they think? Um, and then we go deeper into like the network. Do they have people around them that are uh, helping them to grow? Uh, it seems like this thing is still stuck, Denise. Is it the same thing on your end where it's just kind of a circling wheel on YouTube? No, we're live on YouTube, it's working. Okay, great. So it's just on my end then, let me refresh this then. Uh, so that's really important. It's really important to kind of look at these things and how to help people because when they know how to make great music, when they know how to have a great network, when they, uh, understand that they have a lot more control of their career and they shouldn't just give it away to a label or give it away to some company, then they're able to actually build sustainable living. And that energy from being, uh, constantly fulfilled both creatively and financially spreads in their music and it's it helps the fans it helps their families it helps everyone so i'm really trying to take time on this channel to pre create a platform where not only are we breaking down videos and showing you the insights of these these high in-depth uh, hit songs but a place where artists from around the world can come showcase their music i can help them tweak it help them fine tune it and if the song really does stand out i will literally hand deliver it to some of the biggest executives in the world because a lot of them I work with. So I do not mind at all sharing it with someone to see if I can help build a connection or some sort of bridge because people did that for me. So part of me giving back on this channel is not just giving information, but to hopefully provide a bridge for the people. And that's the reason why it's called music industry contact. This is the one place where you can contact real people in the music industry and people generally want to help because there's a side of the business that really makes a lot of money off of being shady because people don't know how the business works. And then there's a side of the industry, which just has a lot of good people. And so I'm trying to connect people from around the world with the good people. So you don't run into the dramas and the traps and all the other stuff. Cause there's a lot out there. All right, let me look at the comments and see if there's anyone here today. Um, what's up Jaritz? All right, cool. So if anyone has any songs, feel free to submit them. Um, I'm here to help. Uh, I'll stay on for about 15 minutes to see if there any, are any demo submissions. If there's not, then we'll do this again another day. Cause really it's about providing a platform for everybody else just to, um, to get their songs played. Uh, and just realize if anyone does watch this later on, this will become a place where high level executives will come to scout talent over time. I have another club. It's a private mentorship club. And Today was another great example of we brought in an award-winning music supervisor. So for anyone out there, a music supervisor is someone who looks for songs for films. We brought an award-winning supervisor who listened to all the songs that our private group was making. A lot of these are mentees of mine who have been teaching the whole golden ear theory to for about a year. And um, the executive was literally blown away. I'm actually going to post the video in our private group because he was just saying I have, he had no notes after he heard the song. Usually after people hear a song, there's there's notes that he's like, oh, change this, add that. But he had zero notes. And it's because these songs are coming out so good. 
And these people in my private mentorship get to put their songs directly into the hands of very uh, powerful and high level executives. So I've been doing this for a while behind the scenes and now I'm kind of bringing it to the public for the first time here on YouTube. And hopefully we can help some people. And uh, in that, it's always a good feeling to get good music back into the world because there's a lot of music that just gets out there because it's shocking. It's not necessarily that good. It just is shocking. And so people talk about it and they share it, but I'm trying to help bring good music back. And the first part about bringing good music back is people actually know how to make it. And that seems to be where people get tripped up. Okay. So let's see here. Uh, let's see. I'm looking at the comments. All right. And for anyone who was here earlier, we actually had a, uh, a live stream in Patreon where we did um, a full breakdown of another song by Super M, which was called Jopping. And I'd never heard Super M before. And at the end of it, I'm going, wow, some of these vocals are amazing. And someone goes, yeah, that's a mixture of EXO and some other groups. I just went, wow, this is the whole K-pop world uh, keeps on intriguing me with how interesting it goes and how deep it goes. And these are things I never knew about because I, I literally have just been in the studio for many years, just kind of making music and not really listening to music, just making it. So it's been good for me to take time to really listen to music out here and and uh, be able to recycle that into the things I'm creating now. Um, so also we're going to use this channel to, for me to, to uh, showcase some of the new artists I'm working with, uh, a lot of really great talent, and then showcase maybe some of my songs from my band, Sons of Legion, and kind of make this a place where this is like the meeting place for music and people who want to understand more about it and for, for musicians. So all of the help that all of you are doing, subscribing to the channel, telling your friends about it, Twittering about it, sharing it on social media means so much to this channel because we really have great intentions to help people and bring uh, more perspective. So anyone who's taken the time to join our Patreon and, and, and donate, so you're helping us to be able to spend the time so we can make these videos so I can come on live line because my normal job, or I, I don't even call it a job, but my more normal life surrounds around music. And when I make these videos, when I come online, I have to take out hours of my day that I normally would be in the studio making songs. So the fact that we have people who are actually supporting us on Patreon means so much because it allows me to, to, to you know, cut out the time to actually do this. And especially if you feel like what I'm giving you is something that's a value, we really appreciate you taking the time and coming over and supporting us because that allows me to say, okay, I'm going to designate this much time a week towards giving you information and break down videos and bring on these demo critiques and all the things we're going to do in this channel, which are really, really exciting. So I appreciate it. I just want to say that. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, let me read some of these comments. Someone said, I started learning music production this year and I must say your channel is a gold and I love your passion for music. Oh, I appreciate that. What's going on, Yun? Uh, well, I'm glad you started doing music production. Where, where are you? Are you studying at home? Are you, um, are you in a course or how are you learning? Is it just YouTube videos? I can try and help you out. I want to ask if you're still doing the ticketing system or is just going to be Patreon from now on? That's a great question. Uh, I feel like we're probably going to do Patreon from now on. And then if we have a big event of some sort, like we have a couple of big events that are coming up. One is going to be for the first time ever, we're allowing live streaming, live video to come into sessions while we're actually writing the songs for K-pop. Um, so that's going to be starting soon. For the top tier of Patreon, you get access to those videos as part of your membership. For the people who aren't part of the top tier, that will be a ticketed event. So if they want to join just for one or something like that, they have to pay a ticket. But for the people who are part of the Patreon and, and that level, you get to actually be on Zoom with us while we are making the songs. And I feel like that's a pretty cool thing because I, listen, as a musician, if I could have been in the studio while people were making songs and I could have learned all their tricks and saw how they interacted and understood the quality level and how things have to be, <laughs> It's worth its weight than rather going to college that many people do. Because no one actually, and even in music college, they don't show you how they do a song from start to finish, which is crazy. 
I've met tons of people who went to musical college and I'm like, have you ever seen a hit song written from start to finish? And everyone's like, no. Like, have you ever seen a high quality song written, created vocals, everything from start to finish? And they're like, no. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right. Well, if anyone has any questions while you come into the group, if it's about music, uh, if it's about some of the breakdowns, feel free to type it into the chat. I'll stay on for a little bit more. Like I really wanted to make this a demo critique, but if a lot of people don't have demos, it's totally fine. I can always come back another day and wait for people to bring demos. Hopefully you tell your friends about it if you have songs. Um, but I'm not going to spend too much time if people don't have demos because my time is very limited. But um, I will help anyone if they have any questions. Someone said, I want to ask you. Okay, so we said that. Unique said, it's great. Okay, cool. NCT 127 Punch. Are you just saying that's a good song request uh, proxy or are you saying, uh, what's is that a question? I'm confused. <laughs> is that like a request for next one? Oh, so demo critiques that we're doing tonight are songs of your own. That's what we're trying to help people do. Um, my only experience, let's see, my only experience with music was poor piano skills. <laughs> for a couple months, I've been studying production from YouTube, okay, to get some basics. And recently, I've been considering finding some course. All right, good. So I'll give you some hacks, all right? So here's what I would do. Um, how about this? Tell me what, what DAW you're using first. Uh, what, so for anyone out there, DAW is a digital audio workstation. It's the programs that we use on our computers in order to create music. So what DAW are you using right now to make music? Oh, Proxy says, yeah, you got to react to it. It has zero structure. Okay. That's interesting then. Um, the fact that you just said that makes me want to break it down sometime. Okay. Yeah, once you tell me your DAW. Okay, so... Denise says, punch is on our list for the reaction video at some point. Great. So we'll get that to you, Proxy. Okay, cool. Um, all right. But here's what I will tell you while I'm waiting for you to tell me what DAW you use. Uh, here's what I will say when it comes to uh, learning production. If anyone out there is like, I want to learn music production, especially if you come into my channel and you've been noticing that you're starting to understand some of these things, here's the reality. Most people in the world who are musicians have, have never studied the things I'm teaching you all. So it kind of gives you all an unfair advantage. If you're not a musician, you have an unfair advantage because you have knowledge now that even the musicians don't know. But if someone is a musician or is a producer, is a songwriter or artist, you now have even a more unfair advantage against a lot of other people who are in the competitive space. Make no mistake, music is competitive, it, just like anything else. Uh, okay, so let me see. Yoon Geek says, to be honest, I'm not a music creator and I know nothing about music. I'm actually a writer. So music is more like an inspiration to write. So I like learning about what you do. Okay, that makes total sense. Uh, Proxy says, you favorited comments already that said that too. So I'm eager to see the reaction now to punch. Okay, cool. Um, okay, and then you said, since I'm a very beginner, I use GarageBand for now. Okay, fine. If you're using GarageBand, uh, obviously there's lots of tutorials on YouTube that you can use. I would say at a certain point, you probably want to upgrade to something that's more, um, more heavy duty for the amount of work that will need to be done when you're doing actual tracks, actual productions. But GarageBand will give you at least the mindset of understanding how to structure things and how it all works. Meaning the basics like record, solo, mute, uh, dragging tracks around, uh, tempo, BPM, like all these things you can learn in GarageBand. And, and some people can actually do some full songs in GarageBand. But I will say this, for anyone who's trying to learn production, if you wanna make music, one, study my channel. Because I'm giving tips, I'm giving tricks, I'm giving techniques that most people, even who are quote unquote producers or quote unquote songwriters, they don't know these things. 
there's a level in everything where there's a shift. Okay. So it's like some people can be good cooks. They can make really good food, but they don't have the same knowledge as a chef. So there's this gap of information. That's the thing that separates a really good cook from a chef. It's just information. And then once the information is downloaded, how many times you've executed that meal to perfect it. That's the difference between a cook and a chef. So a lot of things I'm giving everyone, these are chef level insights. Most people who write on their Instagram, producer, songwriter, artist, they're just good cooks. And that gap of information is where the difference of if someone finds success or not, it's, it's in that gap. So here's what I'd say to anyone who might watch this later on or who watches this now. If I was going to help you in like the, designing a plan that will get you to a goal of being able to create good music in the least amount of resistance possible. Now, least amount of resistance does not mean zero resistance. You still have to have structure. You still have to work hard. You still have to have intention. It's not just going to happen, all right? That that mindset will not get you there because the music industry is extremely hard to break into, extremely hard to, to keep um, your success rates. So if you really are thinking about doing this, I can show you the area of least resistance. And so here's what I would do. If you're new to music and you want to learn, uh, Berkeley has tons of free videos. So Berkeley School of Music, go on Berkeley School of Music, just go through it. L grab things that you like. You don't got to study it like crazy. Just grab things you like and look them over. Um, there's also, what I would do is once you get your DAW that you really like, so let's say Studio One, I highly recommend Studio One. Pro Tools is great. Ableton's really good. But I recommend Studio One, especially for beginners, because there's a lot of things that are intuitive in Studio One. Intuitive meaning you, th you think about reversing a sound and all you have to do is press Command R. You know, intuitive meaning you want to solo a track, you just press the letter S. It's, it, it's almost so simple that you don't have to be a music producer for many years to understand how it all works. And the sound quality is really good. Now, in Studio One, um, there's a lot of little tricks and tips and things like that you can do. So I recommend this to anyone. Here's the structure of learning production quickly. One, make yourself a schedule where you're available to practice for at least an hour to two hours, you know, three times a week. And when you sit down, the first thing you type in is tips and tricks on, and then here's the breakdown of what you want to learn. Tips and tricks on recording in Studio One. Tips and tricks on producing in Studio One. Tips and tricks on mixing in Studio One. Tips and tricks on mastering in Studio One. So let's say one week, it's just tips and tricks on recording in Studio One. And what you'll do is try to watch at least, I would say 10 minutes of five videos. And while you're watching them, you're practicing them. So you're watching, you're practicing, watching, practicing. What will happen in a very short period of time is you'll start to understand the basics of how all of these different sections work of recording, production, mixing, and mastering. Those are the four fundamental basics that underline all great songs. So if you go on, spend two hours, and the first week is just recording. The second week, you do tips and tricks on production. And I want you to look at different people from around the world. And the reason for that is because Someone's tips and tricks from Canada are going to be different from someone's tips and tricks in Atlanta. And someone's tips and tricks in Korea are going to be different from someone's tips and tricks in Brazil. But when you study all of them, you get all of their mindsets. So you pull all the tips and tricks from almost around the world. And so then you kind of get uh, super, you know, juiced up with information. So once you go from recording, you go to production. And the following week after that is mixing and the following week after that is mastering. Now this is just the overview. So you understand the dialogue, you understand like how the vocabulary is used, you understand what everything means. Uh, this is a very easy way to, uh, to kind of jump right in and start to get things in probably like a month or two. And you start to have awareness. After you have awareness, then take a course. Try to find someone who's already a hit producer. Don't find anyone who's like, I do songs on commercials, so I'm going to teach you how to blah, 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 blah. If they haven't been on the radio before, don't pay them money. 
And I'm not saying they have the biggest hit song in the world, but if they have never been on the radio, do not pay them money. Because to get onto the radio, it's not like a lucky thing. It meaning the person probably had a lot of tracks they've written. They they've done been producing for a while. They um, they have a network. They there's a lot of processes that people don't see. And if someone's just teaching you how to make cool beats, well, that's good. But they're not necessarily going to teach you how to get things through the finish line if you're trying to make a successful living. So, I would say try to find someone who has hits on radio or massive soundtracks but not people who have things on commercials. Nothing against them because I work on commercials too, but there's a difference between a soundtrack, which still has to have to be an amazing song, where a commercial could be, hey, like it could be just chanty stuff in the background and like just clever lyrics, but it doesn't mean amazing song that people are have to be in the movie scene. It's a different thing. So try to get in a course that does that. Um, I see someone here says, Hey, where can I submit the demo? Yeah. Just come on to the zoom with us where I'm at right now. And then we'll bring you on. And then, uh, yeah, we'll play the song. So once you start to understand all these things, take the course I have, I don't have a music production course that you can purchase, but we, I do teach people privately music production. So if you're really serious and this is only for the serious people who are like, I want to be on the radio that's when you would come and contact me and say, you want to be a part of my course. And I teach, uh, there's 200 people in our group that I teach TV. And, uh, I teach all kinds of music. We focus a lot on songs that can be on TV, film, commercials, video game, trailers, radio, and Spotify or editorial playlists, meaning songs that people want to talk about, share on Rolling Stones magazine. So those are the main seven revenue streams in the music industry. And we focus on how do you have songs that are competitive with people in the top 10 of those uh, different streams. All right, cool. So that's what I would do. Recording, production, mixing, mastering, tips and tricks. When you sit down, practice, do it for about a month or two, take some sort of course with someone who really knows what they're talking about. And then, I mean, then it's, it, we go into a whole other thing. So I'm going to just start you there because I think that will give you enough meat and potatoes uh, to, uh, to bite your teeth into. All right. We have, it looks like Dana, who's coming into the Zoom to share a song. Dana, are you there? Can you hear me? Okay, cool. So let's see, Dana. I'm going to, to be fair, post your song link in the chat. in Zoom, and then I'll be able to play it and share my screen audio. You've got an MP3, okay. Uh, MP3, let's see. Okay, cool, there it is. And am I saying your, your name right, Dana? All right, it's pronounced Diana, 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 gotcha. And where are you from? Singapore, all right, cool. All right, let's play this song, let's see. I'm gonna share my sound, and here we go everyone. This song is called Intoxicated. It's loading up right now, and here we go.
Cicada, woo! Sorry, then, it's your touch. Gosh, tell me now all of your plans. Why not take your hand? We can drive each other mad. Baby, I got options. Hey, that's my only precaution. I'ma make it hard. Make it hard for you to get it right. I was not expecting that at all. I'm gonna be completely honest. Hey, um, um, hold, hold, just wanted to, hold on. to thank you real quick. Uh, someone was calling me to thank me. Um, all right, was not expecting this at all. Um, first off, great job on the song. Uh, really good. I'm gonna tell you some things that I would kind of look at, um, but I'm glad that you're the first person. If you really look at this page, you're the first person who's ever played a demo. And if that's the first demo that's played on this page, like my heart feels warm right now <laughs> because this is the start of hopefully something really good here. Uh, your voice is incredible. Like your range is wild. And, and more importantly, not just your range, there's character in it. There's, there's actual like intention and even the way you're grabbing certain notes and the, the way you're gripping some of the things is really good. Uh, I was just, I, the whole time, I'll be honest, I was listening to so much going on, but your voice was so good that I wanted to hear sometimes almost less things happening because there was a lot happening musically. So I want to talk about that. One thing's happening, at least this could be the MP3 version, but there's a lot of high end on this track. It's very, very pushed to the limit. So it's kind of hard sometimes to hear exactly what you're saying because the music is fighting it. It's. It, it, I know sometimes in K-pop, I've seen this happen too, where the music will will sometimes fight the vocal. It's always important that the vocal is the standout part. In any genre, the vocal is the standout part. The, the production is just helping support it. So you do want it to be loud, you do want it to be present, but when there's certain frequencies that are fighting with the lead vocal, you wanna be able to tuck those down the mix. So I would say whoever mixed this, just give them that awareness. Now this is super small, but there's two notes in the chorus that sound like they're a little bit pitchy. I'm not sure if it's a lead vocal or if it sounds like it's backgrounds, but they're rubbing. Um, it's there. I can hear them. It's two notes on different sections in the chorus, which I thought was a little bit interesting because everything else was so perfected that I went to the chorus and I figured that you probably stack the vocals on the chorus a little bit and whatever is doing in the stacks, they're just a little bit rubbing. So I would look at the chorus and make sure with a fine tooth comb, go through some of the backgrounds, listen to all, how, all those notes and make sure they're, they're there. Ah, see, Denise heard it too. It's just those two little things, right? It's very small. Also, okay, so the intoxicated part, here's the thing. I want to make sure you don't get sued, okay? Because that you actually have that part from Britney Spears' song. It's like, intoxicate me, wow, with your love and wow. That's, that's in her song. It's the same melody and it's almost the same lyric, I think. So you have a, if this, let's say this song does well, who knows? you're gonna have a massive lawsuit unless you get that cleared. So it means you have to contact, um, you know, Britney Spears' publishing company or whoever owns the publishing on that song. And if you have a song that's going to have a, a real release behind this, I don't know what you're doing with your career, but if you're doing a real release, if it's on a, a label, you have to get this cleared because this could be one of those songs that if you do get it out, let's say if it does get on radio, you're going to have a massive lawsuit and it's better to clear that stuff up first than do it afterwards because you do it enough times in the song that anyone who knows Britney Spears can be like, that's, that's Britney Spears song. It's very, 
easy to, 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 to register with. The last thing I'll say, and I don't expect you to change this, but I do want to mention this, is you have a lot of good melodies, a lot of good stuff coming on, the vocal, I'm like, this is great. But when it got into the chorus, nothing really rhymed with the intoxicated. So it just kind of came out of nowhere. It was just like intoxicated and then had another melody, 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 intoxicated. But it wasn't like, you know, I love it and I hate it because I'm so intoxicated. There was no setup that helped me to anchor in that lyric. Uh, and I thought it was interesting because that was the big chorus. So I figured you'd have something that at least rhymed with the hook or set it up in some way because everything else I heard was so good. I'm thinking the chorus, you're, you're definitely going to do that thing because that instills more of the hook into the person. Now I'm not saying that this is by any means something you have to do, but it, it definitely is something that wasn't done that I could tell and go, yeah, if, if I was in the room writing this, I would make sure that we set that up a little bit more. So I couldn't hear all the lyrics and I will say this, I, I can tell that you were singing great. I can tell that these words probably all made sense, but I couldn't hear them all. So I don't know if all of them were English. I don't know if some of them were, were a different language. And if you say, no, they're all in English, that means there definitely has to be done work done on the mix because I wasn't able to hear every single lyric. And in any song that you plan on releasing, it's imperative that a listener can hear every single one of the lyrics, unless you're a mumble rapper and trap, then you can get away with it. But for the most part, if you're doing any other genre, you, anyone should be able to listen to the song from start to finish and pretty much know 99, I'll say 95% of the lyrics they should know. And I really didn't. The only words that I really picked out was the intoxicated word. So I would say the production, there's a lot of great elements. Uh, they grab attention in the first eight seconds, the things I talk about. There are sections with powers of three. You have a lot of good movements. It keeps my uh, adrenaline, it keeps my attention the whole time. So a lot of stuff here I think is really good. Um, you might want to look into my private mentorship because you have enough talent that you would fit in really well with everyone else. Everyone else is kind of like you in that, in that group. Super talented, all can write, all can produce, all can sing. And they're all learning the, these tricks and tips that I'm doing. So you might want to look into that if you're trying to take your career really seriously because it's not just myself who mentors. There's 35 other mentors in the group all who are hit producers, hit songwriters. It's called the Billboard 500 Club. And the reason why it's called the Billboard 500 Club is because all the mentors have been on Billboard charts. So they can teach you how all the tricks and how to make your songs really good. But then also there's 500 people that, will, that we have the capacity. So once we hit 500 members, we no longer let in new people. And that's because with 500 people around the world, because we have members in over 28 countries, uh, you don't need a record label. You can just work with each other and release tracks and help each other by um, asking each other, which will we do, we have a thing called the Unity Release, where when you want to release a song to Spotify or independently, every one of the members releases your song at the same time on all of their platforms. So you can get millions of views in a very short period of time because everyone who's a, another musician in front of yours is helping you to share it. So I would highly recommend probably looking into our group because you have the talent that you would do well in that kind of group. But that being said, uh, yeah, those are the only things, like I said, tweak some of that high end, uh, maybe look at the chorus, look at those two notes in the chorus that go off a little pitch. In the future, try to send up some sort of rhyme scheme in the chorus because that was the one thing you have this big word intoxicated. But also, let me, let me see something real quick. Is Britney's song called Intoxicated? So it's called Toxic, okay. <sighs> Rolling the dice here. Like I said, it's very, very important you get that cleared by a publishing company if you're going to release it because you have a lot of great parts. I can see if this is on a record label and if you fix some of those things, how it might be a, re a release, especially if you can fix some of the things I'm talking about. But if it's intoxicated and her song's toxic and you do that same part, they will sue you for a lot of money and it might take your whole career down. So make sure that you get that checked out. All right, cool. Well, thanks for coming in. All right. Well, if there are, let's see, let me read some of these comments. I'm sorry. So thank you for your tips. Someone says Cubose, Cubase is most difficult. Yeah, I've actually never used Cubase. Uh, someone said this is half a banger, 
wait, this is like half a banger, half of what is going on <laughs> uh, with the auto-tune, but it's kind of good. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That was good. Someone said, honestly, the thing that bugged me the most in the song was just the vocal processing. If it needs quite a lot of work, yes. Okay, see, this is good. So people are giving advice, and the reason why I like this channel for what everyone's doing right now is because people are going to be the ones who most likely react to your songs. So it's good to get expert advice and get people's advice because then you can put it all together. And if a lot of people are telling you, hey, the vocals were a little bit processing and a little bit bugged me, and it was a little bit too pin, that's something to look at. But now you know it rather than playing for a bunch of friends. And your friends are just like, anything you do is great. Oh my God, I love you. You go, girl, you slay, or whatever it happens, right? You actually have people saying, hey, might want to look into that. And here's one thing I'll notice, or here's one thing I'll talk about. We just started, today's the first demo critique. You're the first one. So I just want to say thank you so much for coming and being the first, because that's got to be a little bit, you know, daunting. But exactly what's happening in the chat and exactly what's happening here with me is what I'm trying to build, where you can post a song here and you can get information from everyone. So when you walk away, you actually have a, a good guideline to say, okay, I know what to do next. And either in this song or in your next song, you have a better guideline. And I think that's really important in order how to, to not waste as much time as everyone else will trying to get their music out there. Just come to this page. And then we'll get give you real advice and then you can use it and hopefully build a fan base right here on uh, this channel. All right, cool. Oh, gracias. Okay, so if there's no more... Uh, hey, yo, we doing history here. That's right, Proxy. That's right. That's the way I think. All right, so anyone out here who's, who's coming into this channel and everyone's like a new subscriber because this whole channel is new. We only really started really trying to do stuff in the last month or so. Um, I'm all about how do we create a new line in history? I hate, I hate repeating what someone else did. I like using the structure and fundamentals of what someone else does, but I'm never going to just repeat someone else in anything. I'm always like, how do we create a new line in history here? And if we're not creating some part of history, to be honest, I don't want to be a part of it. So exactly what you said, proxy is how I'm thinking. I'm glad that we are on the same page. And, uh, it's interesting because there's certain words that people use, like, you know, we got to be, we got to band together and we got to be on one accord. I don't know if anyone's ever heard those words, band and accord, but these are all musical terms that a lot of people don't remember because language has become so disintegrated. But when someone says we got to band together, what they mean is something that's unbreakable, like a frequency band. It's all a, from top to bottom, it's a frequency that's strong, right? It's a band, it's a frequency band. But also, a band has harmony and units in it, right? So that's where the banding part comes in. But then they say we have to be on one accord. Well, the, the word is a chord. It's, it's a chord. We got to be in harmony. So all these things that are used in our regular language that some people forget are also part of the reason why music is so, passion, so powerful in our uh, lives, because I know it's actually rooted in a lot of our language. And it's the reason why I'm so passionate about helping people and about putting more of it out there um, because we want to make history. We don't want to be a part of someone else or something, something else that I think might be, there's a lot of stuff out there right now that is destroying history. I want to be a part of the, the section that promotes a better history for the future. If you can all understand that. All right. So if we have no other demo critiques, I'm going to take off because I actually have to hop in the studio, but Next time, we're going to do this again next Thursday, probably around the same time, but just check the community section. If you're in the Patreon club, you'll have all the announcement as well. Let's get some more musicians in here. If you have friends who are artists, who are songwriters, like I said, if it hits the mark, I will literally pass it to top-level executives. I'm friends with a lot of these people in the business, so if you're looking for that break in your career, I don't mind sharing your songs and your information with people, so that hopefully you guys can make a connection. Um, and Dina... I'm saying your name wrong if I am. Diana, um, Dinah, your song was super close. Okay, so it was super close to being passed on. Uh, so keep bringing more songs. Keep bringing more songs. Uh, Proxy says, no more questions, just request your NCT punch. Yes, I think someone asked that earlier. I don't know if it was you. Um, definitely, we have that on our list, so we're going to do it. All right, everyone, I will see you soon. 
be well, be well, be good to each other. And uh, yeah, tell more people about Democritique for next week. Cause uh, I think now that we're doing this, it feels good. It feels real good. All right, everyone take care.